is residency through investment alive and well? If I may, before you answer that question, Bobby, and, and I'm sure you'll have something to say on that as well, Anna. There are a few stories in the um, in the in the media at the moment, and I was thinking to myself, you know, what is what is the soundbite about these soundbites? And I would say headlines that don't help. Right, house prices up forty eight percent in four years. This is from the Portugal News. Um, I guess in some ways you could see that as a good thing, especially for those people who are selling those houses. But are these things a little bit bit misleading, Bobby? What do you make of a headline? Yeah, of this? if you actually get the statistics off of the the government websites, basically the, the, the release them. Or even if um, you look at the um, the JLL residential, they have these reports that they release quarterly and so on and so forth. Um, they give the price per square meter per average across different zones and so on and so forth. And um, you can pick numbers from any point in time in any particular place to create any narrative any time you want. <laughs> yes, um, well so, the, so, like someone said to me one day, like seventy-five percent of all statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> so, as, it, as, it's as a bit like that. that yeah. Yeah. So, the thing is that price house prices are rising um, and falling. They're doing both. Uh, it yeah. depends on what it is and where it is. Um, as I said to you already on the lower end of the market because of the, the mortgage interest rates etc um, uh, the apartments in the cheaper areas are actually falling people are having to sell because they can't afford the mortgages and they're selling them basically more than what they paid from the clear the mortgage but cheaper than what their value would have been um, say before they had stopped certain programs and certain things that were going on uh, but the real issue here, right across the board, is supply over demand. That's it. That's it in a yeah. nutshell. The, the corrections that they're trying to do with um, inflation and basically hammering the lower man with regards to interest rates, because they're the ones that's going to suffer. The guy who's at the top of the end of the market, uh, if it goes up one or two points, whatever, he might not like it, but it's not going to hurt him. Where it really hurts people is when they got their mortgage, they get a mortgage that they can basically how much can i get and they get yes. the amount they can get based on the lowest possible denominator with regarding um what what i'm going to have to pay and then they're given a choice whether to go variable rate or fixed rate variable rate is typically cheaper over a fixed rate um so people will go for the cheaper and take the chance um going to go for a fixed rate and then of course if the interest rates change um their mortgage can practically double over over a sh very short period of time which has happened so as i said to you on the last time we were talking if we look at at even on the south bank here at the moment um in the say high densely populated area where you had um large apartment blocks uh people are selling their homes for ninety thousand to a hundred thousand euros talking about one and two bedroom apartments um if you go back six months ago eight months ago you you would well it wouldn't been that many for sale but now there's a lot for sale but what's even more i suppose worrying for them is that they're being sold very very fast because people know that in prices will continue to increase um on all levels of the market um especially in the high density populated areas because there is just no supply and if there's no one buying if you're if they're selling to rent then there's somebody buying to be the the landlord to, to rent to them yeah. And basically, it's going to come back to um, a more of a, a rent controlled, or let's say, uh, landlord will keep putting up the, the rents as they have happened. Rents have gone up, I think, dramatically more so than even um, house prices have over the last couple of years because, of, again, supply and demand, supply and yeah. demand, supply and demand. And it all comes back to me from the timing that there's not enough um, planning. Uh, there's not enough planning advisors, there's not enough planning coming out of the municipalities with regards to the type of housing that people should be building, guidance on the, on, um, the volumes and sizes and so on. So I think the big discussion needs to happen around the need and the uh, need going forward um, over the next 10, 15, 20 years, because this is, a, this is going to continue for the next 10, 15, 20 years if they don't fix it. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby, uh, for your analysis on that. Another headline, record-breaking rent prices in Southern Europe. From what you're saying, that would appear to be true. Um, that's where the impact is felt. This is where you help people, of course, Anna. Um, and that, um, I mean, we're seeing it's a European phenomenon, isn't it? Well, it's a global phenomenon, the way it works, yeah. supply and demand. Uh, according to the most recent data from Idealista, the highest house rents were observed in Milan, Lisbon, and Barcelona. Looks like um, Portugal, certainly in Lisbon, 
is uh, is in good company there in a sense uh, you know uh, with these um these great uh, cities around the world but not great for if you want to rent what what do you what do you have to say about um what what, what bobby's just said there anna i agree with bobby in uh, the rent problem especially is getting worse and this slight break in the market which is not a big break or a long-term break like he was going like he was saying it's probably going to make the problem worse when it comes to rents because it's going to become uh, a lot more but the big companies and the people that have the money to buy them will uh, put them on the market at much higher prices when it comes to rent and so on Mm -hmm. So the um, affordable housing won't really be available. Of course, some people will be able to buy, but uh, it's probably not going to be a majority given the current uh, loan scenario. I do not agree with the comment on the um, the statistics and so on. Uh, I think they do have accurate data and the prices have definitely been increasing dramatically. Uh, and the the fifty percent increase over four years it's not surprising, and I think it's probably pretty accurate. I think your point, Bobby, was how these things are spun, right? You're you're not necessarily doubting the the statistics in themselves. It's just how they're cherry picked to create a certain sort of picture. Exactly, um, I agree that what, house prices have gone up and 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 continue to go up, but there's a couple of reasons why they've gone up, um, and it's not just because and this is where the narrative comes in. The foreigners are, are coming in and buying up all the houses. That's not the truth. Uh, the reason they've gone up is if you look, you have to go back prior COVID and you have to look at number one, the tax take that the government takes from every house sold. And I'm talking about the, the, the EVA. So if you look at um, no matter what business you have, whether you're making furniture or you're doing, when you're building your furniture, everything you buy, materials you buy, the EVA is right off of it. In other words, it's it's a uh, you pay EVA and you and you uh, you buy something, you pay EVA on that, and then you do your EVA returns. It's it's down to basically what you pay it versus what you owe. As a construction company and and in construction, every material you buy and even the the EVA that you pay the sales etc. None of it is right off of it. It's all cost. So that basically means that the government has put twenty three percent higher the price of every property new property built automatically because it's a cost yeah um and if you look at then you pay six percent on your imt tax and if you look at the taxes that the actual people who are working on them are paying and so on and so forth like the, the taxes that are taken off of a, off a new sale i think we've calculated up it's nearly like something like 41 percent is what the cost yeah yeah there is between between the material cost and the tax cost and so on, so it's about forty-one percent of the of the cost of a of a building a new property. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is the cost of materials have have gone up an awful lot as well in the last couple of years, and land prices have gone up extensively. Now, land prices when you're buying land now, you have to say, okay, it's going to take me three to four years to get planning on these properties unless it already has planning. And the market can change vigorously over that period of time. And we even heard stories, so for example, in Granada, uh, I'm sorry, in, in, um, down in um, Comporta, Malij, where people have bought land with PIP and then told by Grandola that, sorry, no, we're not allowed to build anything there anymore. This after they spent 10 or 15 or 20 bought... million on land to build. Yeah, yeah, just right. that, no, they've decided, no, we're not going to build. So the thing is, the, the 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 control over what what and where they can build for sure should happen but the oh, yeah. speed and how it comes out needs to change dramatically the the you have a huge shortfall of properties in high density populated areas and that's why the prices are where they're at and and that's uh, and that's the long and short of it really you can look yeah. at the prices of the construction and it's the same everywhere prices of land uh, i think people started to get sort of a little bit crazy um, to see that there are bu people buying land and all of a sudden they double the price and triple the price and so on and people are paying it as well for land so that all contributes to price house uh, prices rises. so I'm not saying house prices are not going up they're definitely going up but the reason for it is nothing to do with the volume of, of um, foreigners that come into the country the reason to do it is just just not enough planning coming out 
to fulfill the need that's required. There's no stimulus for people to build a type of property or a type of house or a type of standard. There's no stimulus for people to actually buy uh, a house of a type of a standard throughout the country, um, such as tax credits, etc., and so on. Now, they have brought out some stimulus with regards to um, if you have two properties, if you sell one now, as it was a second property, you can use the profit that you made to pay off your mortgage on your initial house and you don't get taxed. Yeah, That's very weak, to be honest with you. It's a very weak reason. It's, it's trying to tell me to sell the property that I have that I'm, I'm renting out. Rents are going up so I can pay off my mortgage and not pay a tax on it. But then I've got low, uh, ex 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 excess income. What to do with it? I invest in something else. So I think that they have to get that part right first. But house prices are going to continue and rents are going to continue going up here. Sure. That's the I, I definitely agree with you when it comes to construction, that there is the, a lack of support on construction and probably an overtax. Uh, on the high density areas, you also have the, um, uh, the, Aru, the, the Aru areas, so the urban rehabilitation areas that do have some relevant tax incentives, one of them being to reduce the uh, VAT from 2026, yeah, but, but... which is nice, but it's not enough, I agree with you. And it's very, very, very hard to be a developer in Portugal. Things are very slow. It's a pain to deal with townhouses. Like you say, they, they change their mind, like they change their underwear. And we have absolutely no control and uh, no say in it. And it's just not an attractive environment to invest in. And that should change because that's going to make the problem a whole lot Actually, worse it's, it's and, what makes it attractive to invest in it's why and, it's attractive to, to invest in because of the supply versus the demand so it is but all people, the rest is very bad <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to continue to buy land and buy properties and so on and so forth because we know that they're not going to fix it anytime soon and that there's always going to be a demand on property and there's always going to be a demand whether it be rental or whether it be a demand on, on people looking to buy, to, to live in, or move out of Lisbon into sort of more sort of um, commutable areas, etc. So, yeah, it, it, it's, very, it's very attractive to invest. Yeah, in there's demand and it can be definitely a very good and profitable investment, but it's going to be a very slow and a very bureaucratic investment. And that definitely puts off a lot of people and... It's uh, it's something that when you invest that kind of thing, you can definitely have great profits, but you should be ready to for it to take a very long time for you to get those profits. All right, but I need to ask both of you what you're doing specifically for your clients because we're going to answer this question: Is residency through investment alive and well in Portugal? It would appear to be so for Mr. O'Reilly. What are you with, with all that we've just talked about this morning? And thank you, T Duck, for your comment. Great discussion today, and from Laura P. What do you say? of lots and lots of Portuguese blaming us foreigners, ruining the housing market. No one talks about the Portuguese owner that are most double or triple the price only to foreigners. And the result of that is making me feel unwanted in a sense. That's that's horrible when that's happening, when uh, we've got uh, the foreigners being blamed unfairly, unnecessarily. Bobby, uh, you don't pay taxes on profits on a house sale if you invest all that amount in buying another property in the next 18 months. That's a good incentive, isn't it? That's, is that's your possible. home. That just has home. to be your home, not a property. It has to be not your for home. investment purposes. Not for All investment. Right. investment you're, you're caught regardless. Unless you're now selling, if you have two properties, one is a, is a, um, uh, let's say a, an investment property. If you sell it and the capital gains that you would normally pay in it, and you use that to pay off an existing credit that you have on your own home, your first home, you don't pay tax on it. But if you're selling your own home to move it uh, into another home, then you don't pay. Uh, Fair and enough. again, it depends on the price of the property as well. There's a little bit of calculations required in all of them. So it's, but it's not better for the individual rather than the, the developer. Uh, yeah, yeah it's that's, for that's, reinvestment in habitational property, and it's yeah. only for your own habitation, so in uh, your own housing. Okay, Anna. So what are you doing? Given all that we've talked about, what are you going to do for your clients at Savvy Cat Realty? I'll ask you the same question in just a moment, Bobby. Uh, first of all, I would just like to have a comment on, uh, uh, I think it was Laura's comment. Yep. And I think this is very much um, a government, the, something that the government is 
spewing so to say so the whole uh, the foreigners are the problem has been the government narrative and i think it's a very bad narrative and a, a very prejudicial narrative it, for portugal even because uh that's a very small part of the problem and the the foreigners in general have been the ones investing the most in portugal and right. basically what they have been doing is that they are pushing away the ones that are um investing and supporting the economy and overall if this keeps happening the ones who will be paying will be the portuguese people because that money has to be coming from somewhere so Thank overall you. i think this is a terrible narrative and it's just a, a political scheme to try and stay with power with the whole um i'm trying to defend the people narrative that's pretty much what this government is doing and uh they're not they're not they are making it worse on the long term and i'm very worried about that um overall for the clients it's like bobby was saying i think that portugal can definitely still be a very attractive when it comes to investment and development because there is a lack of housing and there is more demand and supply and that's probably not going to change anytime soon but if you want to uh, invest in portugal do keep in mind that things are going to be slow so uh like bobby was saying when just to get licensed it's going to be taking between uh, uh, one and a half to four years and then the development and so on so it takes a while to get your investment back but you can definitely have a good return on it but be ready for it to be slow <laughs> thank you for that anna i need to go because uh, mrs m here for is for the barefoot broadcast but we need to ask you that question as well bobby uh, what are you doing for your clients um to uh, uh, mrs m this year's um residency through investment is it alive and well in portugal bobby despite all of these headlines i'm i've I'm, I'm been criticizing the sound bites and now i'm asking you for one <laughs> yeah no to be honest with you for me it's an advantage um because as i said most of my people are are investors uh, most of my clients are investors and always have been investors uh, and i would say the majority of the people who i deal with don't particularly want to move and live in portugal because they're, they're from different parts of the world some do and uh, because they see the benefits and, and maybe as a plan b maybe they might do later on but the initial reason that people are investing with me is for a residency by investment and then um what i do is investments it's investments 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 the fact that they can get a residency beside that is uh, um, sort of a bonus and a benefit to them. Um, so for me, the fact that the houses uh, still continue to grow and prices are still continuing to grow, uh, when I'm selling pro properties to investors off plan, they know by the time that it's finished, it's typically gone up 30% uh, over that period of time. And um, if they're putting in 30% as their initial book and deposit, they've doubled their equity in a, in a, in a three year period. So and at the same time to get a residence. So for me, it actually, it's a big advantage, the fact that the government, in two ways. One, it's a disadvantage because I'm a developer, but in the second in the second way, it's a, it's a big advantage because I can show investors how they can make money and at the same time get a residency. Simple. Superb, excellent stuff. You thought you'd escape the dad jokes. No way. I'm going to do those very quickly now. Um, and also just tell you that a Mogusto uh, festival event is happening on the 4th tomorrow. Thank you, by Randy, for that excellent stuff. More at the, on the Gumper map, which you can find via our website. Let's just move that out of the way and share the dad jokes with you as we wish you a bon fin semana. This might be you this weekend, Bobby, and me. Um, I pointed to two old drunks sitting across the bar and told my wife, that's us in 10 years. She said, that's a mirror, you idiot. <laughs> They said, that might be us in the Gatsby tomorrow night. They said not to try this at home. So I'm coming over to your house. Very good. And uh, if you're not using social media to spout your uninformed opinion, then you're totally missing the point of the internet. Yes, well said. <laughs> what else is it for? Thank you, Anna, for being here today. Savica Anna at savicatrealty.com. And from your home group, Bobby O'Reilly. See you this weekend. We're going to have some fun in San Martino de Porto. Bon fin semana, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Bye. See you, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>